Trigun the Planet Gunsmoke was a 2003 video game developed by Red Entertainment, known as one of the greatest titles ever released for the PS2. Featuring hardcore action, an incredible art style, and a riveting story, the game would have taken over the entire fifth generation of consoles, if not for one small problem. None of what I just said is actually true. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? This is a common theme for Planet Gunsmoke, an unreleased video game adaptation of Yasuhiro Naito's classic Gunslinger series. Announced at Sega's 2002 Game Jam, the title's reveal left fans with more questions than answers, and in the years since, has led to more misinformation than real information about the game's development. Some say a disparate toy line was tied to the title's release. Some say it was turned into another game completely. Sega themselves have refused to say anything at all. With the recent premiere of Trigun Stampede, I wanted to use this Lost Media Monday to spotlight one of my favorite series and debunk some of the rumors behind the most disputed piece of its history. So go gung-ho and leave a like as we kick up some dust on the Lost Planet Gunsmoke and the game it could have been. Yasuhiro Naito's Trigun originated as a manga series that began running as part of Monthly Shonen Captain in April 1995, continuing as Trigun Maximum in Young King R's from 1997 through 2007. Starring a pacifist gunman and walking human disaster named Vash the Stampede, Trigun is best remembered for its 26-episode anime adaptation, which most famously aired on Adult Swim alongside Inuyasha, Cowboy Bebop, and Yu Yu Hakusho as part of the network's first anime block. Its western sensibilities resonated with American audiences who were familiar with its tropes, and the series' old west rock and roll aesthetic was a great contrast to the jazz and space style of Cowboy Bebop. The two shows would even run side by side on weeknights, leading to direct comparisons that admittedly wouldn't hold up throughout the years. Bang. Today, Bash the Stampede and Trigun are fondly remembered as hallmarks of 90s anime culture, and still receive regular figures, shirts, and spin-offs over 20 years later. Despite its long-standing success though, one area the Trigun merchandising machine was never able to reach was video games. Planet Gunsmoke represents the series' only attempt to bridge that gap which is why decades later, its tale still represents a sore spot for fans. Did something bad happen? <laughs> Thank heaven you asked. It's a long story, although it's kind of a short one. In 2002, just prior to the official start of Game Jam, Sega announced it had acquired a majority stake in developer Red Entertainment, who would be creating two new titles for the company. One of these was Trigun the Planet Gunsmoke. Its 20 second trailer showcased a silhouette of main character Vash the Stampede, a whole lot of NPCs, and the game's official title. Its reveal instantly captivated fans. Was it a role playing game? Was it multiplayer? Who was the man with the mechanical arm? And how would the series mainstays be involved? As fans waited patiently, time would reveal the answer to approximately none of these questions. After the initial announcement, Sega never issued any statements, published any screenshots, listed any descriptions, or even provided an official cancellation notice for the game. When IGN asked about Planet Gunsmoke's status in 2004, Sega simply said no comment, marking the last time anyone heard about the title from an official source. It's here that the facts stop and rumors start to take over. If you've heard the story of Planet Gunsmoke, you probably heard that the title wasn't cancelled, but reworked into the PS2 game Gungrave, which released later that year and featured character designs from Yasuhiro Naito. You may have also heard that a Kyoto toy line called Trigun the Planet Gunsmoke was tied to its release as well, with its off-model designs reflecting concepts for the cancelled game more than the source material. But when you start to dig a bit deeper into this, one thing becomes abundantly clear. This is wrong. It's wrong! After researching the history of both titles and the toy line, it appears that the Planet Gunsmoke video game didn't inspire Gungrave or Kyoto's Trigun figures. And in fact, it's most likely that the truth is the exact opposite. No way! I mentioned before that when Planet Gunsmoke was announced, it was one of two titles being made by Ren Entertainment. And I'll give you one guess as to what the second one It was Gungrave! It was fing Gungrave! Not only was Trigun's supposed spiritual successor shown side by side at its only public appearance, but Gungrave was actually announced beforehand, having already launched a website prior to Game Jam. 
Additionally, in a 2009 interview with UCLA, Naito himself would reveal that Gungrave was the original reason the two parties worked together at all. I was attending a convention in America and was approached by Red Entertainment, who asked if there was a certain type of game I was interested in making. I told them what kind of game I wanted, and that's how Gungrave was born. This wasn't out of character for the Japanese developer either. Red Entertainment would team up with several anime and manga professionals over the years to collaborate on new titles, creating 2004's Blood Will Test with Blade of the Immortals' Hiroaki Samura, and 2003's Bujingai with Studio Bones co-founder Toshihiro Kawamoto. This suggests that when they joined forces, Naito and Red Entertainment's initial plans began and ended with Gungrave. As for the toy line, that same quote is all we need. Naito said he was approached by Red Entertainment at an American convention, but it's important to know which one. Naito's only US appearances before Gungrave's release seemed to be Anime Expo 1998 and 2000, and dated concept art from the Gungrave Archives book is labeled from 2001, so the two parties likely connected at Anime Expo 2000, held from June 30th to July 3rd of that year. The month is especially noteworthy, because if summer of 2000 marked the first meeting between Red and Naito, then it's impossible for the Planet Gunsmoke game to have inspired the toy line, since it was already in full production. You're kidding! <laughs> Don't cry! God, that is so annoying. If you look up the Planet Gunsmoke toy line, you'll find about a half dozen figures that are lanky, awkward, and barely recognizable when compared to the art styles of the manga or anime. But when they were released, the Trigun line not only redefined the standard of quality for Kyoto, but the Japanese toy market as a whole. Inspired by McFarlane Toys' design philosophy of sculpt over posability, the figures were created with Naito himself, who had partnered with Kyoto to create the company's Toy Tribe division. Aiming to create flexible statues more than fully posable models, Toy Tribe brought Kyoto from toys that looked like this, to toys that looked like this. While Naito's future work with Toy Tribe would result in the revolver joint used in the Revel Tech toy line that would inspire brands like Figma, Play Arts Kai, and D Arts, what's important to the Planet Gunsmoke video game is what he did at the very start. Specifically, he kept a blog. Come on now, you gotta write the company report. Hurry up! <laughs> The Trigun action figures wouldn't officially start releasing until 2001, but Naito's Toy Tribe blog, kept as part of his personal website in the late 90s and early 2000s, gives us a bit more info on their production. In an entry dated November 29th, 1999, the series creator mentions receiving a prototype of the first Vash figure and a preview of the Planet Gunsmoke packaging. Additionally, he states production had already been underway for over a year, and that the figure would even hit pre-sales at Wonder Festival in February of 2000. This means that the Planet Gunsmoke figures were not only in full production well before the game was announced, but before Naito had even met with anyone at Red Entertainment. So by the end of 2000, there was no Trigun game, and work on its supposed tie-ins was already well underway. But with an existing toy line, an anime that would begin releasing in America within a year, and an ongoing collaboration with an established video game studio, it was probably around that time when Naito and Red Entertainment saw the opportunity to create one. This was when Planet Gunsmoke was born. Now that we know what Planet Gunsmoke wasn't, can we say what it was? Well, kind of. We know that the game would have likely been for the PS2, with Red's only Xbox games being a pair of life simulation titles. We know that Planet Gunsmoke was secondary to Gungrave, with available timelines and interviews implying the original IP was always a higher priority than the anime adaptation. We know that the game would have featured original characters to at least some extent, and while the toy line itself was created independently from the game, it did let us know who one of those original characters could have been. Gazelle the Peacemaker was the final new release from the Trigun Planet Gunsmoke toy line, releasing in 2005 and receiving several recolors. A supposed member of the Gung Ho Guns, a group of mercenaries who tried to kill Vash for the main villains, the character never appeared in the Trigun anime or the Trigun Maximum manga. And while the description on his blister package talks more about his gun than his personality or role in the world, let's take a second to look back at what we learned in this video. Naito's blog post about the production of Vash implies these figures were created years ahead of their retail release. If Gazelle became available for purchase in 2005, that would mean he could have been created in 2002 or 2003, after the game had been announced, but before it had been cursed to the no-comment nexus by Sega. 
It's likely Gazelle was a character intended for the Planet Gunsmoke game, with his figure sculpted and put into production, with the idea that his release would either coincide or come shortly after the title's PS2 debut. The real question, though, is whether there's anything to find from Planet Gunsmoke's development. Outside of the existence of concept art for original characters we've already seen, it is a safe bet to think a playable build exists. This may not mean full playthroughs of the story or final versions of levels, but the trailer's inclusion of what appears to be in-game models and animation implies that development of Planet Gunsmoke's gameplay could have made it as far as testing stages at the very least. But with no known staff, and Naito never having been asked about the game in any interviews, it's it's impossible to know how far things got, or what ultimately blew Planet Gunsmoke off the map. In the end, the details surrounding Planet Gunsmoke's creation and development paint a picture of a project that was always a bit less important than the other things its creators had going on, which to their credit, is honestly understandable. Naito would continue to work on Trigon Maximum until 2007, before creating the highly successful Blood Blockade Battlefront series in 2009, which would go on to earn multiple anime adaptations and a Japanese stage play. His work with Toy Tribe is still ongoing as well, and the company has gone on to produce high-quality figures of his most notable characters, with one glaring exception. On Red Entertainment's end, Gungrave was wildly successful in its debut, and has continued to this day, with the studio publishing the series' latest sequel, Gungrave Gore, in November of 2022. They've worked on other original properties as well, most recently publishing and developing several visual novels for the PS Vita. In the years since its announcement, neither Red nor Naito have mentioned anything about the Trigun game's development, cancellation, or any of its proposed ideas. Both seem happy enough to let the project stay buried, but there are fans of the series, and Lost Media, who would definitely pay $60 billion to know just a bit more.